All right, everyone, welcome back. I know it's been about a month and a half, but I am back. I'm going to start making some videos on the G-Series pager now. We're going to continue that um, series. We're going to do a quick one, though. We're going to do the new radio reference import feature. It's not brand new. It's been out for a little bit, but I thought I would go on ahead and do it because I did say I would be doing it. Also, I'd like to thank you if you are new to the channel and have subscribed. I've probably gotten about maybe 10 to 20 new subscribers since I made a video last, and if you have been subscribed since then, I welcome you. So we're going to get into the radio reference import feature. Now, the G-Series pagers have have had a CSV file import where you could download the spreadsheet from radioreference.com on the downloads page for your system, and you can do it that way. But recently, they've done an import radio reference feature. Now, currently, as of making this video on the 21st of February, I'm <laughs> wow, I don't know how I took, I don't know how I didn't miss that one. Anyway, so I'm on version 0.3.16 beta 22. My pager does run the 1.3 uh, firmware. Now, there have been some glitches with radio reference import feature, and I will show you that here in a minute. But the thing is, where it won't let you log in. So really quick, what you want to do is to get started is first you want to either open up a code plug or create a code plug. I am starting, this is going to be part of the next video where we actually get into the deep dive of the programming. So these, this video part is going to kind of blur that line right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can either, you know, view or existing a profile, you can import it that way. I'm going to use, we're going to create a new profile and I'm just going to, you can choose your model. I'm just going to go down to G4 and just pick one. And I'm going to hit select. I'm going to hit yes. And our profile is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the import feature. Now you want to put in your username and password for radio reference. Now again, if you're not a pro subscriber, you cannot use this feature unfortunately. It's kind of like the SDR trunk feature we showed a while back. This is used again for pro only. I'm selling a broken record. Anyway, I have been having some issues with this where if I try and hit connect, it'll connect. I'll try to at least. And you'll get a beautiful error. Invalid username or password or there's no internet connection. Obviously, I have an internet connection down here as you can see. Um, but it's still not working. There is a glitch and they've been trying to work it out. They've been trying to squash it where it apparently it looks like it's it's hit or miss on on my end unfortunately i've been hit with it on some other people they've been missing it seems to be common with feed provider accounts those who have pro subscription to the through providing a call node or a stream on broadcastify i don't know why that is still haven't figured it out i'm still trying to figure that out but oh well so another thing, when you first do this, and I'm not this, I've had this PPS for a while. When you set it up, it's going to connect for, it's going to download the database. It may take a long time. I've heard some people it take up to almost an hour, just depending on your network connection. Don't interrupt it unless it interrupts itself. Don't try and click out because that's what I did. That apparently some people are having that issue because they're not waiting, they're impatient like I am and they click out of it and then try. If you download for five minutes and you're like, well, it's not working, and you click out of it, you're gonna get, you may get this error. I've tried this on three different computers and it's still showing the same problem. So what I would recommend doing is just let it download and if it has that problem again, don't worry about it. Just let them kinda just uh, see on radio reference forums and in the Unication forums page for more information. There's some threads. They may be adding some more beta updates as, as the time progresses and they'll get this bug squashed. Now if you're again if you're having this issue go to offline. Now again this may not be 100% accurate meaning that it could be delayed. This information may be incorrect. Just a heads up. So again what you're first going to do is you're going to select your country or your region. Canada, United States I'm going to do and it's already pre-selected because I was trying to do this video earlier and it didn't really work out for me. So that's why I'm actually streaming on my Mac to my desktop so I can see it from there because I tried it on my desktop and my desktop's old and it does not like doing a lot of stuff, including recording a video. So I'm going to do Kentucky. I'm going to do Jefferson County. So you just come and scroll down to Jefferson County. You have your conventional systems. If you have a 
a page a, a G series pager that has the UHF or VHF add-on to with the 800 700 megahertz this is for you you can add amateur radio you can add conventional you can also add a DMR if it has it so like say here there's your DMR right there that's if you have it if you don't if you have a G4 like me you're just on trunking or conventional P25 I'm going to select MetroSafe. Once I have what I selected, I'm going to hit Get Data, and it's going to load it up. Now you can see on your left and right, you have on your left you have all your sites. See, MetroSafe has four. It has the Jefferson County, the New Bern, High Bullet County, the Shelby County, and the Oldham County site. For this sake, we're going to select all. Over here, you can also look at all the talk groups. What I recommend doing is is that it also I would also put the rate of reference database next to you with this screen and I would manually filter out any talk group that is encrypted like these are encrypted these two are right here this ULPD dispatch and this ULPD TAC those are encrypted but it won't show you so what I would do is is I would go through individually and select talk groups that either you just don't want to import or are not or that are encrypted or if you just want to import all you can do that too I'm gonna to do that for simplistic sake now you can create a new zone slash channel knob. It'll automatically create the zone for you with the with the site information already in it. That saves you a step. I'm gonna do that for simplistic sake. Now you have two options here. Import all control channels or you can do primary and alternate. Totally up to you. Depends on the system too. For example, MetroSafe only sits on, and it's a Motorola system, only sits on one control channel. So I'm just gonna import, I would import all control channels. Now, you can if you want. You can do alternate if you choose. But if you're going to import a statewide system for travel like I did, and I'll show you an example here in a minute, I wouldn't import alternates because you don't know you're going to you're going to take up space really quickly. You can only have 256 channels only. And we'll, you'll see that here in a minute. So I'm going to do import all control channels. And it'll say you can only import up to 256 sites and 256 control channels. So if you are importing a statewide system, again, like um, the safety in Indiana or the tac and system in Tennessee, you may have some trouble. So what I would do is, is I would keep it at controls only. And if it, if it maxes out at 256, you may have to go in and make multiple zones for multiple. So like say there's 500 sites. 500 control channels for a, a state system you're probably gonna have to break it up into two to three zones and do it that way this is just an easier way without the version 1.4 which is the trunking free scan which has so many bugs I cannot deal with it it was a great feature but it just wasn't worth it for me having it because there's a lot of other bugs so this is a way to import and not have to so much worry about doing it manually which is very nice so you'll get this you know it's telling you like hey you know you cannot say don't show this again it's gonna show it every time it, then it'll tell you that it's imported four sites, how many control channels, and how many talk groups. It'll tell you it's also imported to zone one, knob one. Hit OK. You can go ahead and exit out of this. Now as you go over here to zone and channel, there it is. As you can see, it's only imported one talk group. The best way to do this is just manually, imp like you'll have to manually add priority and non-priority yourself. And the talk group IDs will be right here in the talk group section. You will have to manually either add voice storage, change your background color, or add any two tones you want over here. Now, now what does it look like on frequency and system settings? Parameters not been completed. No, it's fine. So if you come over here, there it is, a little emergency metro safe. I can't expand that, it won't let me. But your WAC in ID and your system ID will import like it did on radio reference. Make sure these are right. Either do either make sure they're right or put put a series of F's. It's five F's. What that does is it's a wild card for the radio that says, Hey, you know, hey, I don't know it. Can you find it for me? And it'll find it for you. Same thing with system ID, you want to put three F's. Also, and again, we're blurring the line between this import feature and the next video, which this is just like a broken record. You can put these as F as well if you don't know what they are. Again, I would put a lot of these as F because you just don't know if they're correct. Again, this data could be old depending on if you're having the error like I am where it will not pull it off the uh, database because, again, 
my password's wrong. You can also do the control channels. You can edit. What I would do is if you're doing a statewide system, I would personally go through and delete any redundant frequencies. So say, for example, 8544875, maybe down the list further, there's another one. I would delete the um, repeat frequencies, so that way it's saving room. Also, another thing, too, with importing uh, state systems is that uh, for some reason in this version of the pager that I'm on, it's 1.3. I don't remember the exact numbers on it but it will glitch. It will sometimes crash the pager too, so keep that in mind. So the best you can dent, the more you can condense it, the better, because I think the pager's trying to scan all these control channels and it crashes. They may, they may fix it, I'm not sure. But let me show you an example of what I've done. So I'm gonna go to my code plug that I actually use on my pager for itself. I'm gonna go over here to my zones. And you can see I have a trip channel. Where is it? There it is, <laughs> couldn't find it. You can see I have TACAN and safety. Now, I didn't want to import like a thousand talk groups because that would be kind of pointless. You can see here I have 98 sites and I have 201 control channels right under the minimum or right under the maximum correction. So, what I did was in order of having to import like a thousand talk groups, I just turned it on trunk, trunking talk group monitor. So that way, and I just you have to put at least one talk group in the monitor. So, I just slid a random talk group in there and it'll pick up anything as long as it's on a site. Same thing with the safety for. Uh, Indiana did the same thing and I, again I did not add any talk groups because I didn't want to do that because again that you only have 8,000 talk groups and if you're importing multiple sites if you're going multiple places it, it, it catches up with you pretty quickly if, if you're if you're kinda of like me and you sometimes like attention to detail if you want to add them go for it be my guest but I don't do that because it could take up all your talk group you can take up your talk group list pretty freaking quick and again, I have this set up here, and I can, I'm can i not done this yet. I have not gone through and done redundant stuff. Again, I would go through and check any redundant channels. Keep in mind, if you're at some of these um, sites on these systems, I think TACAN's like this. I don't think Safety's like this. You have to make sure it may delete channels or sites that aren't in your pager's bandwidth. For example, mine is only 7 800 megahertz. TACAN has some sites that I think that are VHF or UHF. It will delete those because if you have your code plug set to the correct pager serial, it will it'll when it imports, it'll see that and say, "Hey, this pager does not support UHF or VHF," and it will delete the site. TACAN has more than 98 sites, but because I have had issues with since my pager is not VHF or UHF, it's not going to import those. So keep that in mind as well. But that's pretty much it. I, I'm, I don't want to be too specific because a lot of the things I'm telling you now, it's going to be in the next video, which we get into the deep dive of the programming. But it's a basic import feature. It's very nice. A lot of the programs like Uniden and all these like other programs like ProScan have this feature, and it's good to see them slowly migrating to. 1 point, version 1.4 for scanners. 1.4 is supposed to be for scanner people. Now, if I were you and you're in version 1.4 and you want a reason to downgrade to 1.3, this is your reason right here once the bugs get squashed or if you have no trouble. The import feature is the best thing. I love it. Even though without, even with the bugs, there is some issues, I'm okay with it. Because I like, when I go to travel, I want to make sure I'm picking up almost anything I can on the road. And this is probably the closest thing you're going to have to the nationwide database. You can't program it on the fly like an SDS-100 would. But this is the closest thing you're going to get on version 1.3 where you can do trunking free scan except you have to program it yourself. And it makes programming so much quicker. You could probably have all this stuff. Pro I, could, I imported a TACAN site within five minutes without editing. You need to edit this in the PPS to make sure. And you can see too on safety where it, you can see here on safety where I do have the max. So you may, depending on how big the state is and how many people are using it and how many sites there are, are you may have to add to more than one zone. It may take up to three. Just depends. Now, if you live in a state that has a statewide system, I would break it up. But if you're like me and I don't live in a I don't live in a state yet that has a statewide system. May want to do it like how I have and just try and put as many in there as possible. Or if you want to get more fancy and you know you're going to go through a certain area, you can handpick the counties you're going through 
and then take those out and only have the counties you're in. If you want to get that specific, you can. Even even in this setting right here, I can go in and delete the sites, or you can do it in the import feature by selecting certain sites that you want. Again, that's it. Again, sorry about the hiatus I was on. I uh, I just got busy with a few things, and I, I want to start making more of these videos. The SDR trunk videos may stop for a while. I was smart. I was not thinking properly, and I have a node in for MetroSafe in Louisville, Kentucky, that I stream, and I put all of my SDR hardware there to keep an, to keep it going. But I may have to pull one of those SDRs out so we can do some of these SDR videos because I know a user. I don't know his name off the top of my head. On one of his videos, he wanted to do AM. So I want to try and get that done hopefully within the next two weeks max. So next video we're going to review or we're going to show you how to basically program this page. We're going to get into, we're going to get into, I think first we're going to do how to program it manually without an import feature. And then I think next we're going to look at some of the settings you can do to add the page or like adding a, 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 a picture in your home screen adding the talk group hold, showing you how to use that and stuff like that. But that's literally all I have. I just want to do it really quick. It's probably a long, it's probably about the same as all my other videos, kind of long, but just a quick, simple feature that has recently come to the PPS and it's a great feature. And again, once they get the bug squished out, I think this is going to be a perfect, a perfect feature for everybody to use. And everyone, I really appreciate you and I will see you in the next video. Oh, and one more thing. I'm so sorry. If you have any, um, ideas for me let me know i would love it and um i am going to start looking at doing a tiktok i don't do a lot of, i don't do a lot of social media but i have seen some guy, some people on tiktok do some videos of the radios i might do something like that just to see you know something outside of youtube y'all can see with me you know as what i do on a daily basis with my radios you may be able to see some calls and stuff i'm still thinking about doing that but if you all think it's a good idea let me know and i will see you all in the next video thank you for stopping by